so it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Aston Villa fans and welcome to For the Love of Paul McGrath podcast for a preview for Arsenal versus Aston Villa at the weekend and rumours of the podcast demise after last night were wide of the mark. Um, <laughs> you know, the messages we got after myself and Bar- Paddy tore strips off each other last night was uh, was was heartwarming but that's what happens in our WhatsApp every day. So <laughs> we, just, we, just, we just gave a taste of it on, on video and as I said to as I said to somebody last night they said Jesus I hope to tell you don't fall out and I said hey I dressed him up in a Howard Webb issued referees jersey, and he's still talking to me after that. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're grand. <laughs> I'm not sure you're coming through your mic there, Paddy, but because I didn't quite hear what you said there. But um, all right, I said I still yeah. have it too. You still have it too. There you go. It's a bit better. It's a bit closer to you there. But uh, yeah, we might need uh, and and we're going to talk a small bit about the ref actually because. Uh, I have a quiz on David Coote for you, uh, Paddy, and I hope you haven't seen Stato's Twitter today because uh, that's going to give it away because uh, he's the man who's going to be in the middle of the weekend. But before we get on to that, firstly, obviously, I think the biggest thing on everybody's mind is going to be potential squad rotation. Um, Like, lest we forget as well, Arsenal have a huge, huge tie against Bayern Munich as well. Um, uh, Marteta has a lot of skin in the game in the Champions League too. Uh, so, you know, they will be looking at potential rotation. And also, judging by Unai Emery's comments last night after the game, he's pretty much ready to go again for, say, a lot of these guys are going to play 90 minutes again at the weekend. What do you think about it, Paddy? Um, <clears throat> well, we have to. We, we, we don't really have a choice. Um, I, I can't I can't envisage any way that we, uh, we weaken what we already have. So... There's no, there's nobody there that can come in o- other than you're talking about playing Kane, Kessler, Hayden, and not playing Carlos or playing Zaniolo um, in place of Morgan Rogers and keeping him for Thursday, playing Diaby, playing Duran. I just, I just don't see. Um, yes, there's a lot of play, and what what also isn't uh, spoken about enough is that Emery is going back to Arsenal and he wants to. But while he would never admit it, he would want to stop them winning the league. And if he can do his little bit to uh, to upset them, you can be sure that he'll enjoy that on uh, on Sunday. Um, he really enjoyed one of my highlights of the season was watching his reaction as he walked away with that smile on his face after beating Arsenal in December. So I just think that this means more to him than probably the Man City game did ten days ago, or. Um, he'd be more pissed off at losing this than, than dropping the two points against Bournemouth. So he will go for it. Um, we've we've obviously got that big game on Thursday. Arsenal have a big game on Tuesday or Wednesday, is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. So, yeah. So, look, I don't think they'll lessen their squad. I think they're they're all in. I think they have enough in reserve to, to play a, a full-strength team. He doesn't rotate too much, possibly on the wings with the likes of Trossard and Martinelli. Mm. Uh, mix it up, but other than that, he doesn't do too much. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gabriel Jesus start either. Um, so we'll, we'll start off in the Arsenal team now. I wouldn't be surprised, like against against Bayern Munich, they started with David Rea and goals, Kirior, uh, Gabriel, Saliba, and White is the back four. I could see Zinchen- Zinchenko coming in there at left back, no problem. He came on as a substitute for Kirior, um, in that game as well. Uh, then in midfield, they had Rice, Jorginho, and Odegaard. Um, Thomas Partey's back. Maybe he gives uh, Jorginho a rest there, brings in Partey. Maybe he gives Declan Rice a rest and brings in Partey. I don't know what. I don't know whether uh, that would be the case. Whether he want to. Um, oh, my little executive producer is after making an appearance. My dog called Paddy as well. Look at him in there in the background. Oh, he's after getting camera shine. He's gone. Um, That's all we need. Two Paddies on the podcast. Two paddies, yeah, yeah. I was roaring at him this morning as well. Um, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Party is uh, might might come in there as well, and uh, I th- I think he'll, I think he'll probably rest Havertz and bring in Gabriel Jesus because I think he'll want look. 
you're playing against Aston Villa. What do you do? You bring on the striker that's that, that's got blunt form to try and get a goal against Aston Villa. And time immemorial, that's what that's what's gone on. And uh, I think he might start him there um, instead of Havertz. Uh, he brought Havertz. He brought him on for Havertz. I think um, in in that game as well. It, uh, I'm just checking it up here. Uh, no, he brought Party on for Havertz. He brought him on for Jorginho. But uh, yeah, so I think that he might start with him, start with Gabriel Jesus. So I think there will be a degree of rotation, but like, not <laughs> I don't know, do they have the players to, to do wholesale rotation either from that point of view? But uh, like, I think there's only a couple of teams in the league that have it. I think Liverpool have the players to do it, considering the young players that are brought up in Kwanzaa, uh, Bradley, um, Harvey Elliott, all those guys. I think they're comfortable playing those guys. Man City can obviously do it. Chelsea can obviously do it as well. Um but there aren't too many other teams in the Premier League that can complete. But Spurs can probably can can do it too. But not a whole lot of teams can go out and change more than two or three players from their uh, from their first eleven and uh, and be com- confident to say that yeah, that eleven could start any any week in any game. But the biggest thing for us, Paddy, is who's going to partner John McGinn in the middle of midfield? Are you would you be comfortable with John McGinn and your E. Tielemans in there, or would you be comfortable with John McGinn and Young Tim because no Douglas Luiz? Well, that's a six million dollar question. That's that's the that's the that's the only Emery earning his big bucks because that's our weak spot now at the weekend, and that's where I, I would imagine Arsenal will absolutely try and exploit that situation. Who do I pick? I I, I just can't see it being anybody else other than Tielemans and McGinn in in sitting in those in that role. Um, I, I I'm open to correction, but I, like unless he does something. I, I just don't, I just don't feel that the young team is ready enough to be playing against a midfield of the standard that's going to be out there in front of him. So, <clears throat> in my opinion, he'll go with experience and he'll go with McGinn and Tielemans. When we played them in December, Paddy, how many players from that t- that eleven that went out are we going to be missing at the weekend? Uh, probably about seven or eight. Is there <laughs> two? Is that all? So we're going to be missing Luis and Kamara. No, it is our it is our midfield. It's Luis yeah. and Kamara. But uh, the mid, the players that we have, the team that we we started were Martinez and goals: Dina, Torres, Carlos, Kanza, McGinn, Luis, Kamara, Bailey, Tielemans played behind Watkins. Um, so you're obviously looking at McGinn coming in field now for in, in, into the middle of that midfield. Whether Tielemans comes back and then plays Diaby and um, and Rogers instead of Rogers, obviously out on the left hand side in Diaby in, in behind Watkins. I'm not a fan. The more I'm looking at it, I'm not. I'm, I'm a fan of Musa Diaby. Don't get me wrong. But the more I look look at it, when he's in that traffic inside in the middle of midfield, because he's because he's not built in and not like like I. Okay, where am I going with this? So Buendia, when Buendia played in there, he was a diminutive character, all right. When he played in there, he he had a small little bit more, and it sounds strange, but he's a more heft to him when he was inside there. You know, he'd be, he'd a touch of the John McGinn's about him. He could he could use his body, he could manipulate players around the place with his body. Not brilliantly, but he could still do it. Would he give the ball away with a pass? He would. But when Diaby's in there, he doesn't have that kind of body manipula- manipulation when there's players around him. He, When the ball is coming towards him, should I say. When he has the ball at his feet, yeah, he absolutely has that. So I don't know. I'd love to see something different in Diaby to play on the left-hand side and Rodgers to come in behind Watkins, which he's done before. But it's all to be written. If he goes with Rodgers behind Watkins, I think it'll be Zaniolo. He'll probably play on the left-hand side. And the more I see Zaniolo on the field, I like him. I like his effort, but like when he's in the defensive area and sometimes he overruns the ball, he completely runs himself out of the game. So there's a difference between not defending and and not knowing how to defend. And sometimes Zaniola looks like he doesn't know how to defend. I think because he over... Like there was a couple of times last night where he went to block a fella crossing the ball and he just overran the ball. He overran the player and the ball and they were able to cut backwards a small bit. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. It's going to be interesting to see what they do uh, at the weekend from that point of view. Yeah, I oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I just have to wait and see. And and as as luck would have it, the the um the conference news conference press car has just started. Has it? <laughs> okay, let's go. Li- let's let's, let's go. Li- let's, let's go I live. Uh, I'm sure I saw a notification there a second ago. Let's see. Um, yeah, it looks like Aston Villa have something up. No, they're talking about uh, under twenty ones facing Coventry in the Birmingham Senior Cup. It's actually, um, actually the app that pinged, would you believe? What is it? The presser. Cool. Presser is up. Okay. So. 
On team news, Longley and Cash are training today with the group. Brilliant. So we'll work tomorrow again and see how they will feel and get a decision about the team and the players' availability for Sunday. Um, is there any advantage in managing Arsenal? Not really. I think it's a different context and different circumstances. Yeah, I'd agree with that too. Uh, on wanting Villa to be stronger, uh, we've conceded some more chances we need to try and avoid. Yeah. Um, looking to repeat the, des the December victory. It's different, completely different. He says we played here at home in December um, compared to the match we're going to play on Sunday. Um, something similar because a lot of the players will be playing again, fighting in those teams, but different because we're playing at the Emirates. Mm -hmm. We're really playing in a different context and they're fighting for the Premier League trophy. So nothing nothing major in that other than, I suppose, it's, it, if Cash is back, I think that just puts a smile on my face for Sunday. And not only for Sunday, for next next Thursday, I think. And do you know mm. what? And Langley too. Bearing in mind what, what he has done, I would probably leave him off on Sunday and have him at full tilt cash, that is, for Thursday. Yep. If, if, if the extra few days are going to give him um, time to recover, that's what I would do. Oh, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, have him on the bench, have Longley on the bench, and in case of emergency break, glass for the two of them. Um, obviously, I would imagine Chambers is going to be on the bench. Oh, I, like, I know we're going to see it probably between now and then. Somebody will say, why not play Chambers in defensive midfield position? I think my what? silence kind of says it all. That's nervous. That makes me nervous. You know, it does make no. me nervous. And, and it's the reason it makes me nervous is because it's just... Like, it's ages since he played there. And people say, yes, he played there for, was it Fulham, I think, when he was on loan and he did a great job there. Um, But that must be the bones of six or seven years ago now. And he hasn't a lot of yeah. football under his belt. And he did come the, on. The, and thing, said, uh, the thing about yeah. Callum Chambers is when, when, he, when he has played for us and got a run in the team, he's done okay. But mostly yeah. it's, mostly it's centre-back or right full. Um, and plus, it was a di completely different context to the, to the team that's playing now, and it's a lot more. Um, let's let's just say we're not kicking the ball long from the kickouts like we did back on their, mm. on their previous management. So he, he he is not as comfortable on the ball as the others, and the team is probably outgrowing him. And while there was a time where I was singing his praises when he was getting a run in the team and doing well, and he scored that magical goal against Leeds. There, there probably is no place for him in this squad at the moment. And and that's where I feel about Tim at the moment. He's just not quite there yet. Chambers is not going to get there at this stage of his career. So for me, I'd be parking the Chambers argument, but he has done us a solid a couple of times this season mm. when, we, when we've needed him. So I'm not going all in on him because we, we absolutely need a, the squad. He would have been in the squad last night if he, if he had been named in the European squad for sure. So we, we were light in that position because he wasn't named in it. So I do I want him in midfield? Absolutely not. If we have to play him, so be it. But uh I, I would be very surprised if there's a if there's a change like that in place for the game on Sunday. I think we need to go as strong as possible. Otherwise we could we could be looking at our uh, our goal difference taking a hit, for example, which 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 is as good as losing a point as well. So we need we need to be mindful of everything that's at play here, and and be mindful of the fact that if, if we, for this once, get back to where we had been playing pre pre Christmas, could go and get it. I'm not saying we're going to, but we could go and turn them over. We have turned them over already this year. We've turned over Man City. We probably don't have, um, the embarrassment of riches we did when we when we played them. To have Douglas Louise and Bubakar Kamara is an absolute game changer. To have Maddie Cash at right back, I think, is a game changer too. But Chances are we're not going to have the three of them. We definitely don't have the two of them. So that's my opinion. I expect them to go strong. I expect probably to see a very similar team to what started last night. Um, I, I just don't see any changes other than the enforced ones of the injuries and the suspension to Douglas Louise. Yeah, uh, be great. Like, I, I'm, if we had Douglas Louise in there at the weekend... I, I would be pretty... I'd be like, hey, lads, why can't we get a result? We're only missing one player from the first 11 that played against them in, in December. Um, You know, Douglas Louise is such a big miss. He is such a big miss because he's he is the most defensive-minded 
of our of our midfield. Now, look, John McGinn will come in there. You, you, if you told John, McG- John McGinn to butter a slice of bread for the whole 90 minutes while he was playing football, he'd do that. He'd probably still have a great game, you know. And uh, he's just he's just the most moldable and adaptable player. Right? And we said it before, when it comes to picking an Aston Villa Premier League 11, like it'll be very difficult not to have John McGinn uh, in the conversation for that because just like how adaptable a footballer he is. He's really going to have to adapt to the weekend, being inside or being potentially the elder statesman inside there if Tim is alongside him, or also being, you know, the, the real engine the house alongside Tielemans, because for all Tielemans' great work, you know, we know that Tielemans is sometimes, you know, it doesn't really have the engine to get around the place. Um, and that's okay. I wouldn't have it myself. And and there's arguments to be made that other players in the team don't have it either. Um, so lot of again. Latin McGinn. And the great thing about McGinn is McGinn got a goal, got the goal against Arsenal the last day, was by far and away a man in the match. And sometimes when the chips are down like that and John McGinn needs to be brave arse or brave heart, he, sometimes he pulls it out of the, or a lot of the times he pulls it out of the bag. So big leadership game from John McGinn. Not putting pressure on him. Like I know he's going to perform. He's always going to be a 7 out of 10. But big, I think, you know, there's going to be a huge game from him at the weekend because, um, he missed the he missed the the uh the he missed the Man City game? Did he? Yes, he, he did. did. He missed, the Man, City. He missed the Man City game. And I think his his uh, effervescence around the place would have been a huge difference in that game. Uh, remember it was against I, I think it was against Man City, was it that we brought on Callum Chambers in that defensive midfield position? You know, so uh having him again in there would would have been a huge, a huge uh, plus point for us. Not mm-hmm. having Louise is a huge negative for us today. And against against Arsenal in December, we did bring uh, um Jacob Ramsey off the bench. We won't have that luxury to do it. Uh to do it either um, at the weekend, um, but yeah, look as I say, they they brought like their their team in December was Ray and Golds, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Odegaard, Rice, and Havertz played in midfield with Saka, Je- Jesus, and Martinelli. So like, if you're resting Havertz and you're bringing Trossard in there into that midfield area, um, that's probably going to be their first their eleven. You know, so they had that same eleven in December, and we frustrated them. Came off the bench for them was Eddie and Eddie and Ketia, Reese Nelson and Trossard. So um yeah, look, it's Jesus, their bench they must have been decimated with injuries. They had El Nenny in the bench as well that day. Um and Cedric Suarez Suarez as well. So yeah, a bit mad. Um I think, I think there's anyway. uh, Richard, a point of oh, no injuries would be awesome. I'll tell you now, Richard, if if there's a point of no injuries. Um, by seven o'clock on Sunday, I'm quite likely to be very, very drunk because that would be my ideal scenario. Um, I don't envisage by any circumstances we're going to get the win on Sunday. But if we, if you could tell me now, would you take a point and no injuries? I would snap your hands off. Oh, me too. One million percent. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Like, it, essentially, this is a point no one would expect us to get. It would be fantastic. Be absolutely fantastic. Um, and it would go some way to to alleviating the two uh, the two points dropped last week as well, you know, um, which is which is always beneficial, uh, and also to put us in a great mood going into before Bournemouth next week again, Paddy, when we're going to be doing the team sheet tension from probably outside the Sacred Heart, I would imagine somewhere like that or somewhere like that, and as long as it's not raining uh, when we're both over there. Wherever, wherever um, we're dropping our bag before we head to the airport, you mean? <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wherever we're dropping our bag is right. Yeah, with the game we moved to Sunday, we had to, um, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight yeah. or better. We're, we're half hoping that uh, somebody like uh, Jensen Button is going to be driving taxis around B6 at some stage <laughs> and we're going to be lucky enough to hop in behind him. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll be grand. Um, we'll be grand is right. Paddy, I did say at the start, David Coote. Refing against Aston Villa, he puts a frown on all our faces, I think. But Paddy, can you tell me what our record is under David Coote? Uh, Just, I, I suppose, uh, do you think we have a good record under David Coote? I know we have a good record under David Coote. <laughs> I, I know that we've never lost a game when David Coote has been the referee. Is that correct? In the last five, so in our Premier League record under. David Coote is played 11, yeah. won seven, drawn two, lost two, and we're unbeaten in our last five. Okay. 
So sometimes we come on here, like we, we all know there's fans, fans all over the Premier League will say, oh my God, that guy can't control the match and he can't. And maybe at the weekend, if we're the team that's uncontrollable and gets away with no yellow cards and rises up Arsenal, maybe that might work like, like Brentford uh, kind of tried to do yeah, to us, why? even though we did come out victors in that game. Um, maybe that's potentially, uh, that could be it. But Peter Banks is on VAR duty. What do you make of Peter Banks? How do you, I don't really mind him. <laughs> They're all the same. All the same. Yeah, but like you know, know the big the big news this, the big news this week with PGMOL is they, they voted for the introduction of the the yeah semi automated semi automated uh, offsides. That just frees them up to look at the the bigger picture that they're they're not actually getting right as as we see week in week out. So we we watched the World Cup last December as much as it killed us to watch it in uh, in uh, Qatar, but. The, what didn't kill the game, despite the fact that we had seven or eight and ten and, and one stage, I think even 15 minutes in one of the World Cup games of injury time, we didn't have that delay for offsides. It was it was done really, really quickly and there was nobody complaining because it was done by, I don't know what type of technology they use, but it works well. And it's used in most parts of Europe and used very, very well. And for some reason... Like every, everything else, the, the VAR, we were late, you know, just mind-boggling what PGMOL do. It's like as if they, they write their own rules until they're ready to implement them. So it's there, you, it's coming in, and I'm very, very happy with it because it takes did, the human error out of this. Did, did, did you see when they're actually implementing it, though, midway through the season? Ah, you're joking me. Yeah. After the first international break, I think, in September. So after week eight or something like that, it's been implemented, yeah. So, like, literally, we're talking organising a piece up in a brewery territory there from that point of view. Look, maybe they need to calibrate it. Maybe they won't have time to get it into get it into stadia. I don't know. Maybe they need a couple of live games to run with it to make sure that it actually works. But we will be talking. There will be a team at the end of the year going, oh my God, if that if the, the automated uh, VAR thing was in, we would have had three points here or we would have, you know, that team wouldn't have three points there. So, um, yeah. well, we know they're not, they're not capable of drawing lines straight. You and your architectural background have pointed that out on many occasions. So, this needed well, to be brought in last season, not just not just now. Well, uh, uh, it's so yeah. So no, my thing is picking the pixel that you're going from. That's always my thing. So the lines don't need to be straight. So just a little bit of a, a, a of an education. So when those lines are drawn, they're not drawn in parallel with the actual end line of the field. They're drawn from a thing called a parallel uh, vanishing point, which is where you have to have when you have two lines that are parallel together and you're drawing it from an indescript area. Vectoring means that you have to go from a thing called a vanishing point, and uh, I won't get into any more you can google it afterwards so that's why sometimes these lines look skewed or maybe sometimes the lines look they're cross look, look maybe because if they're really tight together they look like they're crossing over each other but they're actually not because they go back to a vanishing point miles behind where the where the actual screen is my big problem is where do they pick the pixel from if it's a static image that's my huge problem so with this with the reason that the automated var is going to or the automated var for offsides is going to work is it will convert the field into a 3d image it will convert it into a block um, solid 3D image whereby you'll be able to pick a definitive line as opposed to a pixel, a blurry pixel. And that's always been my issue with v VAR is picking a blurry pixel. Like if even if you had a, I don't even know if there's a 16K vision or anything like that at the camera that you can have at the moment. But even if you had that, there's still going to be a blur in the pixel somewhere. So you don't know, you don't really, you can never tell where the end of his foot finishes. Whereas if you've got lasers hitting off the body and you're creating a 3D block image, block, a 3D solid model that the computer does that, and like, like when you go through the... Um, uh, like, like when you've got facial recognition and anything like that in your phone, it creates a 3D block image of the front of your face. That's why you know when you've got a mask on, it'll be able to pick out different points in your face and stuff like that. So that's what I'm excited to see. Now, will it be perfect? I don't know. I don't know. But it'll be a hell of a lot better than drawing it off the end of a blurred pixel, which drives me scared gatty because there is no it's an indefinite indefinitive point and you cannot tell where the end of that pixel is for for 100 sure you'd be within like a micro micro micrometer of, of of where it is but still it's it's a it's a subjective line anyway we found we, we found the reason why it won't be until international break 
<laughs> yeah, trying to get, trying to, trying to pull the wires through the through that house and beside that uh, Kenilworth Road will be difficult. I'd imagine. Yeah, I'd yeah. imagine it will be for sure. Um, look, it's, no, prog look, so, it's progress. It, it, it just it doesn't is. make sense yeah. to be doing it midway during the season, but it is progress, absolutely. Yeah, something I've tried to remind myself the whole time, well, over the last couple of years is don't fall into the trap of if we can't have everything, we shouldn't have anything, you know. So progress sometimes can be good, and this is progress, I think, for 100% sure. Yeah, yeah. Be interesting to see how our high line will, uh, will be affected with it. As long as they don't go with the clear daylight rule, which is nonsense. Um, that, to me, is a nonsense altogether. But uh, I've no problem with, it, with somebody's wrist being offside. Um, but the, the clear daylight rule means that there'll be some amount of goal hanging going on. Um, and running back on side, uh, running back on side to check your run to run back uh, and get a true ball again. For me, it's it's Arsen Wenger has is having a nightmare with that one. If he's going to try and implement that one, I think. But uh, anyway, that's for another podcast for sure. Uh, anything else to talk about, Paddy? Was there anything else? Um, playing Dortmund in preseason. Are we playing? Do oh, I did not see that. Yeah, we're playing. Dort we're going to Dortmund, Paddy. I was wondering what Noel Connolly was talking about, Dartmouth. Yeah, I'm going to give him one of the two you big, massive, empty suitcases, and you're going to you're going to go to Cologne and fill it up with proper college for bring it home for me. And you can try in a when, couple of Dartmouth exports for me today, about an hour and a bit, hour and a bit ago. By Villa, huh? by Villa, yeah. Well, oh, great. No, by Dartmouth. Okay. Sorry, by Dartmouth. By Dartmouth. So Villa haven't announced it. No. Dortmund, I think, well, not that I've seen. Dortmund have announced it. I don't know the Villa, let's see. Um, nothing there from Villa side yet, August but Dortmund 10th. announced it, yeah. August, August 10th. 10th. Okay. Yep. Sounds good to me. Yeah, Paddy's just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've August never been 10th. to Dortmund. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes, I've never been. I won't, I won't get to Dortmund. I, I can safely say I won't be in Dortmund right now at August 10th. Um, but it's uh, yeah, it's definitely one that I would love to go to. And check me on this one now. Did I make this up out off the top of my head? Are Dartman's massive terraced stand behind the goals? The they got their inspiration from the whole end, the old whole end. When they were they building say. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether I've read that any anywhere mm. in Dartmouth, but that's what they say. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 a magnificent stadium. And it, it makes for amazing noise, and a place that even, yeah. even though it's only a preseason friendly, I think it'd be a great place to visit. Do you know what they could do us a massive favor by getting knocked out next th next Tuesday night <laughs> or next Wednesday night as well? They could do us a huge favor by letting it let it go go there and bang in six goals. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. And um, we we'll roll we we'll let them roll over us then the preseason and we'll uh, we'll um, we'll bring a lot of fans for the economy. That's how we can do it. We can bribe them and say, listen, lads, we'll we'll pump pump up your economy for the space of a weekend there if you just. You know, <laughs> don't win against uh, against uh, Atletico. Uh, we look. I Isn't it we amazing just... that this is the type of caliber of of preseason friendly that we're now attracting? Because they've obviously invited us to, to play there. We didn't write to them and, and say, "Can we go and play in your stadium?" Yeah. They, they obviously invited us. So we've come a long They're way from it. from playing. No disrespect to Ren, but Ren preseason or Borussia Dortmund preseason is just chalk and cheese. So. Fantastic. There is a part of me that misses the preseason tours to Sweden and playing like the third division teams from Sweden when they're all just coming off the end of a of a of a season and they're absolutely knackered and they're third division teams and beating them like twelve nil. There's a bit of me that does miss that, um, but they were the good old days of the late nineties. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, like I spent all of the nineties traveling around Dublin for the whole of August watching Premier League teams playing. Yeah, in Pats and Rovers and Shelbourne and and Bows. On, on nearly a nightly basis in the first couple of weeks or the, the two weeks before uh before um the season kicked off season kicked off so I miss all them days didn't always win them games mind you but it was just enjoyable There's... to watch all those yeah I was, I, I, I was the same I saw Peter with RIP so I'm crack one in against Sam Pats uh, uh often talk about I'm uh, sorry Peter Peter Whittingham yeah not Peter with Peter Whittingham uh, Peter with RIP did I just I didn't break news there did I <laughs> Peter Whittingham, sorry, apologies to the Witt family. Um, but uh yeah, and, and there was rumors that Villa were going to come to Dublin this this uh this preseason as well. But or was it last preseason? I think there was supposed to be uh, yeah. yeah, there was supposed to be like a surprise um one. Do you remember two years ago? Was it two years ago that um 
It was. Remember, Villa were supposed to play a team and they couldn't play, and then they had to. Was it Salernitana came down and played yeah, them? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, for like at, at less than like twelve hours' notice or something like that. They they played Blackburn and they came down to play Villa. Yeah, what a mad was, time that was. was. COVID. It was the the re the re. There was nobody at the match. It was it was the restart after COVID. So twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty one. Yeah. Be right. yeah. 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 There was no one there, and uh, they played Blackburn, I think, and then they came down to to play Villa. Villa had to literally ring around. Who's in the country? Yeah. Apologies for scaring people. There. Apologies for scaring people. Um, that was a slip <laughs> of the tongue, for sure. Yeah. A slip of the tongue. Um. Yeah, I think that's going to do it, Paddy. Uh, we will be back with... Uh, what time are we playing, Arsenal, do we, uh, on Sunday, that's actually? At four. Great. I'm going to a wedding tomorrow, so um, half past four suits me. Suits me down to the ground. Uh, what time will it be finished then? Just trying to do the maths. Yeah, perfect. I won't even miss bedtime with the, with the with the kids. Oh, I'll have super brownie points um, for that. Yeah. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> just, to, just to update everybody as well, because... Um, I told a story the other night about uh, our friend Spud, Mark from yes from Cork, who lives in Australia, who was due to come home for the Liverpool game. Incredibly, now I should have spoke about this last night because there were so amazing people that wanted to start GoFundMe's and everything to help Mark get to the game and book his flight for him and everything. But the good news is that Mark has managed to change his flights at a lot less than what he expected he would have to pay. So Mark Brilliant. is going to get to go to the Liverpool game and not fly back till the Tuesday. So great news! Uh, after uh, <laughs> not having any luck, he's uh, he's able to go to that Liverpool game. So thanks to everybody who inquired and sent me messages over the last couple of days. But uh, <laughs> and even himself was a bit taken back that I had uh, put that out there on the <laughs> on the podcast the other night. But uh, thanks to everybody for the messages asking what they could do and as if there was anything that could be done. Thankfully, mm. that doesn't need to be resolved. But it's just one of those things, you know. I think I think they should probably, in the future, take that Monday fixture out of the calendar and allow people to enjoy their last match of the season. It's a shit show, and to do it just for the just for the, the clicks and and the and the um, little sound bites that they get about people talking about Jurgen Klopp, and and not to have that lost in the last game of the season. It's just a pain in the arse for everybody. So, you know, it's about time they start thinking about the fans. The, the Yeah, well, I suppose, was it Manchester United? You know, we don't, we don't often praise Manchester United in this podcast, but Manchester United put in a formal complaint to the FA and said, listen, this year, apparently this year there's been more games moved to later kickoffs whereby um, they've said the public transport isn't open and fans find it difficult to get home after games, you know, specifically with games going on, those extra 15, 20 minutes longer with with, uh, with longer stoppage times and so on. And they wrote to the to the FA and uh, I think that they're bringing emotion about it uh, in the off season as well. And I would imagine a lot of football clubs are going to say, yeah, hey, look, lads, you've got three Sky Sports channels there. If you can't, ha- or you've got three BT channels there. If you're writing your checks for those guys there, and there's three games on, why not start? Uh, um, you know, tr- start all of them at quarter past seven. Give the people a choice because half the time you're looking at it there. There's uh, badminton and the other, and nothing against the other sports. Don't get me wrong; they all need to be highlighted and so on. But the, the TV companies will find a way to honour it because their cash cow is really going to be the Premier League, and they will find a way to honour that while honouring all the rest of the stuff um, that they have on as well. And I know I don't want to sound like one sport to rule them all type of things because God knows here in Ireland we can't get it like if. If I was the if I was the the Taoiseach of Ireland in the morning, I'd write an executive order to say, right, on a Sunday, there's five different TV channels opens up open up. You can get to see every GAA match as you want on free to air, and there's no messing. So I'm uh, I, I know that the sports struggle to be highlighted and struggle to be um to be shown, and 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 not everybody watches football, but I think there's workarounds for it. There has to be, because we did it during COVID. You know, we did it during COVID yeah. seamlessly and no one had an issue with it. If you yeah. have more red button functionalities, have more red button functionalities, but it can be done. Um, mm-hmm. It can be done. Um, Kevin Hunter is oh, in the chat there. there. <laughs> Kevin is in Arizona at the North North American meetup and we're, ho- we're hoping to get Kevin on before the, uh, during the team sheet tantrum on uh on Sunday and hopefully chat to a couple of the guys on the North American meetup. And I would imagine after arriving there yesterday, sitting through the match yesterday on the piss today, tomorrow, and then Sunday, I would imagine we are going to look at some very sore heads on Sunday. 
Yeah. yeah. But, uh, we, we I, I, I was just nothing as well. more looking out at the piss and rain here in Ireland to be sitting in Arizona in 33 or 34 degrees. So I hope they all have a great time and they're dressed appropriately yeah, yeah. and wear lots of sun cream. And, uh, yeah. and most, most of all, the Villa gives them something to cheer about because <laughs> they got yeah. the win last night anyway, thankfully. That's something. But uh, yeah, they got they got a they got a bonus of uh, of getting two games this year. So fingers crossed they they uh, they get something out of Sunday. Well, I get... saw I saw Simon Leach up on top of Phil's shoulders with his top off, you know, and that's Scottsdale's son. That that doesn't take any prisoners. So take evasive action, everybody. Take evasive <laughs> action. You get court martialed in the army if you get some if you get sunburnt and can't go to war. Just remember that. Uh, so you treat your meat up like you would if you were going on a military excursion and put on your sunscreen. Like Baz Luhrmann said, uh, specifically in that Scottsdale, uh, that Scottsdale searing heat um, in Arizona. They don't call it the desert for nothing. Yeah. Right, we're definitely going to leave it there. Um, I need to go back trying to reassemble a kitchen, um, which isn't going very well at the moment. <laughs> Uh, but it's great. I get to I get to hammer things in where they shouldn't fit, and it's great for the old uh, for the old centering the chakras again after after uh, some tough weeks in work. But um, we're going to leave you go, lads. We will see you again on Sunday for Team Sheet Tantrum and post match. Um, yeah, and also oh, the, we're we've got a giveaway going on on Twitter. If you haven't seen it already, go find our post on Twitter. All you got to do is like it, subscribe to the podcast and and uh, follow the podcast as well. We'll announce a winner on the Team Sheet Tantrum as well. So a shirt of your choice will be sent to you no matter where you are in the world. Um, just feel like it's time to do a giveaway. We haven't done one in ages. Um, actually, I've noticed something funny, Paddy. This might be a little bit of market research as well. Not market research, but remember we used to do loads of giveaways. Our, our uh, Twitter follower count went up exponentially when we started to do those. But recently, we lost 500 Twitter followers out of the middle of nowhere, and I think Elon is check is is cashing in and uh, <laughs> or is uh, getting rid of the, the bots. And I think a lot of them came when you put giveaways in, in the top title on Twitter. You tend to get a rake of people follow you that have tons of numbers behind their name anyway. So uh, and have just started up their accounts. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if it inflates that 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 follower count again. But um, yeah, so. Go follow, subscribe, do whatever you need to do, and uh, we'll pick a winner uh, live on the Team Sheet Tantrum on Sunday as well. Excellent. Great stuff. See you all. Have a great rest of your Friday. And to Kev, take it handy now uh, while you're over there in Scottsdale. But uh, we'll be back again for the Team Sheet Tantrum. Stay safe, stay healthy, and all that's left to say is up the villa. Up the villa.